Good morning, Christ Kingdom Life Center. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. And to all of our visitors that have been following um, this YouTube channel, we hope that the messages have been a blessing uh, to you. Now let's go to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We magnify you. We love you. We thank you so much for being on our side. We thank you so much for calling us unto yourself. We thank you for our redemption. We thank you for our life in you. Lord, peace and grace abound now because we believe in you, Lord. We trust in you. Our faith is in you. Continue to bless all those, Lord, who are experiencing COVID-19. Bless us in several ways, Lord. Give comfort to those who have someone who has transitioned, those who might be taking care of a loved one, Lord. Strengthen them in their inner man that they might be able, Lord, to be a blessing to them at, that, at this time. Let all this work together for our good. Be with the children who are out of school, parents who are watching them um, at home, those who are displaced because of employment, Lord. You are ultimately our provider. Do so now, Lord, as we trust in you. Let all that we do, Lord, magnify and glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Let us continue to pray with and for one another. Again, I can't wait till we're all back in the sanctuary. But I think there is a new normal. There is definitely a new normal. Um, let's go to the Word of God. Again, I'm trying to keep these um, um, short that you might be able to be like the church at Berea, study to see if they be so, uh, and then to play them over, to share them with someone that it might be a blessing. We want to look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, a very popular passage of Scripture. It's the, uh, the potter and the clay. Um, we want to entitle this message, Reformation, Reformation, or to be formed again. I really believe that God is causing um, the believer and the body of Christ uh, worldwide um, to be reformed, um, to get back to his original intent and purposes. We know that Jeremiah um, was a prophet during the exile, um, and a widely held belief was that they were in exile, um, listen very carefully, because they had really gone away from the, the statutes, the commands of God, uh, and really their, their, in, their original intent and purpose, which was this, they became a nation um, by the calling of Abraham so that they would be a people that would show forth the praises of God, that people would want to know God because of how God interacted with them and how they uh, interacted with one another. But they've gone the way of following idols, trying to be like someone else. I think there's a couple of key points that are going to come out in this particular message that I want us to be cognizant of. As people are um, fighting for reopening, um, to getting back to normal, um, I'm fighting for a reformation, uh, for us um, getting back into the ranks of what it means to be a child, a daughter, a son, um, of God, that we allow God in this time to reform us, because I think that's what he's doing. Um, let's look at the uh, scripture, Jeremiah 18, uh, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 uh, through 4 in your hearing, and then we're going to go a little further with the teaching. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Now, he's going to see something, but God's going to cause him to hear something. He said, then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. That could be spoiled, ruined. Um, it wasn't coming out correctly. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Again, I told you um, the title of this message is Reformation. For the next 16 minutes, I want to point out some, some key things to have you um, think about and uh, uh, hopefully uh, that the Spirit of God would uh, uh, charge each and every one of us to allow God to reform us. Um, um, Tone X song says, make us over again. Uh, reformation or reformation means the action or process of reforming an institution or practice. And I believe God is reforming um, the church. This might not be as large as uh, Martin Luther, but I believe there's a there's a coming back. There's a there's a reforming. We are literally in God's hands. I told you a little bit that Jeremiah was a prophet to Israel while they were in captivity. 
Um, but more importantly, uh, Jeremiah's message really was let God reform us into the nation um, that we were uh, called to be in the first place. You and I um, become a part of that through Jesus. Uh, and it's really so we can make God the creator, God the son and the Holy Spirit known and love. I think the church has gotten away from that in several ways. I'm not going to go to that in, 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 any, in any deep uh, dialogue, uh, but I want to let the word do it as I always do. Now, he goes down and the Lord causes him to hear what he's seeing. So let's look at some key uh, um, um, aspects of this story. First, the potter was working the wheel. Who does the potter represent? The potter represents God. But notice this. The potter is skilled and intentional or purposeful, making something to fulfill a purpose. It's not that the clay is on the wheel and the, the potter all of a sudden is going to have an idea. The potter is intentional. And so while we're in this reforming, God is purposeful on what he would like for us to do. Ephesians 2 and 10 would say it this way. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There's a prepared um, purpose, a pre prepared plan um, that God is forming us for that we might walk into them. But let's, let, let's continue. Uh, and, and so I want to ask you, um, because this says that God um, is, is forming the clay, and the clay has a purpose. It, 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 has some, it has meaning, if you will. So I'd like to ask you, what purpose is your life fulfilling? What legacy are you leaving? What are you building? What, what's the true meaning of your life? Now, watch this. Um, not only is God um, intentional, um, but we realize that God has his hands on the clay. And it takes God's hand in order to form the clay into what he has purposed in his heart. And so when we say that God has his hands on us, I often say let's not use the... Um, the, the, the Holy Spirit, if you will, just as holy anesthesia, but that God might do the work in us that he that he wants to do. So God's hands are on us. And notice that there must be pressure on the clay in order for it to be formed. So I really believe that God not only has his hands on us, but he'll cause life circumstances, um, both good and bad, um, um, uh, to, in order to form us into what he uh, would have us uh, to be. So God, if he has his hands on us, um, the Bible often says that the clay ought not say to the potter what we ought to be, but let God make us into what we should be. And then we'll find meaning. We'll find purpose to our life. We, we have as our tagline, live life on purpose. Make your decisions from the purposes that God has birthed in your life. Now, one of the interesting things is when you study um, the potter's wheel in Hebrew, it, off, it, it means a birthing place. Imagine that. And so we were born again that we might fulfill God's purposes. Yes, God loves us. And so the purposes that he gives us ultimately fit the reason why we are in his hand. Now watch this. The clay represents Israel. And I want you to really hear this. It represents all of Israel, this nation that God has called out like he has called out the church, that it might show forth his praises, that it might make him known in love. And too many times, listen to me, uh, um, um, uh, staff members, too many times, we have made our pulpiteers, our, our preachers, our, our prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers only be able to, uh, if you will, impart at an individual level. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. We must do that. But all major changes come when God can move a collective people to change a region, to change an organization, um, to change a church. Watch this. To reform it that it might once again accept the purposes of God. And so listen to me. Listen to me, God is reforming us that we begin to look beyond ourselves and look to the collective whole that we might be the church, that we might be, in a sense, called back to be reformed, that we might be able to show somebody who God is, that we might be able to change a region. Listen, so again, you're very important to uh, the plan of God. But do, does any of your meaning uh, for your life, any of your, any of your purpose for your life, is there anything grander, bigger than you that you're connected to? Because watch this. When you're connected to that, you're in all of the strategies of God. But watch this. We have to get beyond just looking at ourselves. We have to get back as the church. We have to let God reform us. Yes, God, into the people whom God has called us to be collectively that we might be able to change our neighborhood. 
I heard someone say once so that we can put um, neighbor back in hood. We can call this nation again back to being a nation. Watch this. That honors God. So we have to begin to see that God calls out a group of people that they might follow his vision. That's the that's the crux. That's the that's the purpose of Habakkuk when he says, write the vision down and make it plain. Yes, it's going to be uh, uh, um, deal with the individual, but it's also about a collective whole then addressing these problems, addressing these Issues addressing these social ills uh, and bringing us back, allowing God's power, God's hands to get on us, that we might be reformed again. Will you let God reform you? Don't don't go back in uh, uh, into the old. And I'm not saying that everything has to be thrown out, but God is reforming us. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. So watch this. As 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 as, as the Potter, who we say is God, is forming the clay. He's intentional. The clay then submits to the pressure that's being put on that it might be made into what God's heart and mind and his will has already established, a prepared thing that it might be of some use, that it might have meaning, that it ha might have purpose. Now watch this. Um, God, in order to form it, uh, or the potter has to keep, um, if you will, uh, putting water on it. Water oftentimes represents the Holy Spirit. But watch this. It's the Holy Spirit then. Uh, while we're in the hands of God, that makes us pliable, that makes us be able to uh, shape into what God wants us to do. And watch this. It, it happens again and again and again. And if you go and study the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find that there was the filling, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, uh, of the Holy Spirit, uh, that watered them and watered them again and watered them again. Why? So that they continued to be formed into whom God wanted them for his purposes. And watch this, not just individuals, but it's very inter interesting because it falls on the masses. God, once again, Holy Spirit, come and fall on the masses that we might, uh, that we might submit, Lord, that we might come under uh, a common vision, that we might be reformed into a purpose, in, into a plan, in, into a, a particular meaning, in, for a particular region, that we might be able to change it, that we might be able to change a particular organization, that we might lead a business, that we might be able to change education, that we might be able to change media. Reform us, God. Reform us that we might be able to do the exploits of God. Now watch this. There, there are times for which um, the potter may pick up a tool in order to shape, um, in order to smooth, in order to um, rework, to, to, to form um, this vessel um, even greater. And I think sometimes that tool is it's other people. Iron sharpens iron means there's going to be some conflict. And sometimes we run from that conflict. And it's that very friction that is making us. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's circumstances. Sometimes it's situations. Sometimes it's absolutely a prophetic word. Sometimes it's the word of God. Uh, it's all of the above. But it's so that God can, can continue to make us into his purpose. Now, after the water uh, and when the... Um, the, the pot is, um, or, or the clay vessel is where uh, it should be. Uh, many times nowadays we would put it in the kennel, or we put it in a fire, or we put it in heat. And you know that represents the Holy Spirit. And what does it do? It solidifies what God has made. Can we stop using the Holy Spirit and let God reform us and let the, let the Spirit of God that's moving uh, and the revelation that's coming, uh, if you will, solidify who we are? Now watch this. One of the things that's very interesting, and I think also germane to this, is um, unlike manufacturing, where they manufacture um, um, pots uh, in mass, and they all come out exactly the same. At this time, with a with a potter at the wheel, watch this. Everything that was made, even if it was a a cup, all those cups were going to be authentic. They were going to be genuine because God had made them. Uh, they're going to have different flaws. Um, they're going to have uh, different lines, if you will, even if they're the same height, even if they're fired and colored the same. And so really what I'm saying is God is causing each and every one of us to be genuine, to be authentic. Could you imagine um, that every uh, ministry has the same goals, but their methodologies might be uh, different according to the regions where God has put them, according to the leadership of, and, 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 and the body that God has brought together. It's time for authentic, genuine ministry. I heard a bishop say that, and my heart just leaped. I said, yes, Lord, God is causing us to be authentic. Watch this. 
uh, and it might be in the organization, um, in the church, in, in, in education, all of those mind molders uh, for society. Could it be that your authentic idea that God has placed in you, the way God has made you, is needed at this time? I know if, if you've heard more than one message you, that's come up over and over again. It's the authentic, genuine you. It's your spiritual DNA. You don't have to be like anybody else. You're authentic. That's your identity. And listen, Christ Kingdom Life Center, you've heard me saying this for years, that a lot of what God is doing you don't see anywhere in, the, in our midst. In some senses, we're a prototype. We'll go first. We're, we're authentic. We're, we're, we're genuine. We're not different just to be different. We're different because that's what God has called us to be. And I want you to embrace that. He's reforming us. And if God is reforming us, he's reconciling us or bringing us back to him. Yes, he's bringing people back to himself. He's reconciling you with him. And watch this. I often say um, when we give um, the altar call, when, when we extend the invitation, that all of us have gone that way. And every once in a while, we ought to reconcile. There's some way in which we're off in our relationship with God, with our relationship with others. So God is calling us in this reformation to reconcile, to reconcile with him and to reconcile with others. He is repurposing, not giving us a, another purpose, but he's bringing purpose back into our mind, back into our heart. He's again establishing, will you live your life on purpose? He's reposturing us. He's putting us uh, in position. He's, he, 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 he's shaping us that we might be of some use. Thank you, God, for the kingdom. There's a rebirth. Yes, I know you're, you're born again. But there's this continuing move of the spirit that continues to birth ideas, that continue to birth ministry, that continues to um, birth, put, how to put flesh on the gospel, that birth, yes, even businesses, that birth organizations. But it's in the reforming. We have to embrace this time of reformation, of reforming. Reform me, God. Reform me, God. Reform me, God. And watch this. Not just the individual, but the collective whole. God, reform us that we might be more effective in what we're doing. I'm going to say it again. I just don't believe that we can fulfill the great commission of God and advance his kingdom by ourselves. So God has called nobody to be a lone ranger. The clay is all being formed together. Now watch this. God says this um, uh, in the verses that follow. He says, now there are, if, if a nation that I have planned to um, bring up uh, and they turn away from me, they missed the mark. He said, then I'll bring them down. Or if a nation um, that I didn't um, uh, plan on bringing up, uh, basically, if, they, if they'll turn towards me, then I can bring them up. In other words, God is saying, in this reformation, I, I, I don't think he's talking to us as an individual. I think he's talking to nations. The, the body of Christ is made up of nations, and he's calling all of us to once again, to be one, to have the purposes of God, to move forward under a common banner, to keep the main thing the main thing. So let God reform us, Christ Kingdom Life Center. Let God reform us, other ministries that might be hearing this, other ministers that might be hearing it, other staff members. This I really believe is a clarion call. And I sense in my spirit um, with them wanting to open up. Some people are like, oh, let's just get back to normal. Some of normal is good. But God is in a reforming stage. And let us receive that now. No, I love you. We'll see you again Tuesday um, at 730. Awesome message. Awesome message for 730. I often tell people the reason I'm fat in the spirit is because I eat the same food I cook for y'all. God is just that good. God is just that good. In other words, I read his recipe, book and cook. This ain't uh, me. This ain't intellect. I'm not saying anything is wrong with intellect and reason. But I really want to hear from the Spirit of God. And I think we're in a time of reformation like none other. And I, for one, as your leader, want to accept it. And I want you to accept it. I think we were born or reborn, even out of our initial state, 
mm -hmm. to Christ Kingdom Life Center so that we might be able to do the exploits of God in this time, in this season, and to be a blessing. Listen now, very close, to generations not even born the time yet. I can't do that by myself, nor can you. So God is reforming us together. Like my previous message, I'm suggesting that we all come home, that we all lend our hearts, our mind, our treasure, our talent, our energy, that God might reform us collectively and let us make a difference. Jesus didn't try and do it by himself, as anointed as he was. He called people to himself, reformed them, and sent them out. Be like the church of Berea. Study to see if it be so. May God bless you and keep us our prayer. We thank all of you who have continued to support us through Givelify. And those who have um, made sure the office manager has gotten your, um, your tithes, your offering, God bless you. It's a conditional blessing. Know that we want to put the flesh on the gospel, that we want to be a blessing to you. That isn't just about us receiving. We're hoping that the word that God is um, proclaiming through me is a blessing to you. Please share these messages if they've been a blessing to you. It's one of the things God has called us to do. Okay, I love you. Hopefully we'll see you soon. God bless.